Welcome to Langdog Workflows 2.0. I'm excited to show you how easy it is to create your first automated workflow. By the end of this video, we will have created, tested and deployed a live workflow that can process customer feedback and categorize it for your team. We will cover triggers, actions, agents, structured output, data referencing and of course how to run and deploy your workflow. Let's dive into it. To create a new workflow in the sidebar, go to Workflows 2.0. Click on new workflow and let's start from scratch. We will close the chat over here. We will cover this in another video. Next, let's give our workflow a proper name. Click rename and I will name this customer feedback analyzer. And hit save. Now, you are seeing the workflow canvas. This is where you can add and connect nodes. A node is like a building block where each building block is performing a specific task. Now let's talk about what we are building. We want a workflow that can um, collect and receive feedback via a form, then analyze the sentiment and category via AI, and send the results in a Slack channel. Let's build it. First, we need a trigger that kicks off our automation. In Langdog, we have different options. We have integrations and webhooks, which are triggered by external systems. We have scheduled triggers, which trigger on a time-based schedule, manual, which trigger on a push of a button, and form which triggers when the form is submitted. And we will select form for our use case, which gives our teammates a good opportunity to submit feedback they received from customers. You see that the form trigger was added as a node in our canvas. And when we have a node selected, we see all the details over here in the right panel. Now let's add some fields to our form. We click add fields and can then input label, description, select the type and if it's required or not. And first we want to get the customer name. This is the text and also required. Second will be the feedback that they gave. This will be a longer text and therefore we will select um, multi-line text. As you can see, there are different options here. And this one will be also required. Add field. And last, we want to also have the email uh, of the customer, which is text, but we will make this one optional. Perfect. Now our trigger is ready and we have to form as the entry point for our workflow. Next, we will add the agent node, which will use AI to analyze the feedback. For that, we will click on the plus button here next to the form trigger and select agent and we will create a new agent, which inserts a new node in our canvas, which is already connected to our trigger. Now, agent nodes are very powerful because they use LLMs to process information, make decisions and generate outputs. Let's configure our agent. We will give it a name. I will name it feedback analyzer agent. Let's select a sonnet four for this agent. And I also have prepared a prompt. The prompt says, analyze the customer feedback, determine the sentiment, primary category, and write a brief summary. The prompt is where you tell the AI what to do. And it's important to be specific and clear here. Now to the key feature, which is the structured output. And you can configure it down here. This is important because of instead of free form text that we get back from the AI, we can define the format that we want and tell the AI exactly what fields to return. Over here, we can delete the default fields and add our own. In our case, we want to get the sentiment for which I want to provide predefined options. And for this, we have the select type where we can enter our options here. I will have positive, neutral, and negative. And this will be, of course, required. Then I also want a category, which will also be a select type with some options predefined. And here I want category product, service, pricing, and other. Also required, add field. And last, I also want to get a quick summary. And this will be just a string, which is fine. And I will add a description, which says a brief one sentence summary, because it, sh it shouldn't be too long, add field. This is powerful because the outcome of the AI is now predictable. Okay, let's start a test run. For this, we can hit the test run button above our trigger. And for the form, we can fill in some test data. Okay, I've added some test data and we can now hit the one flow button to execute the entire workflow of our test data. Here we see what test data we inserted into our form and we see that the agent is running now. The answer is 
that there was no specific feedback included in the request, so it didn't really work. That's because there's one more important thing, which is to give the agent the actual feedback to analyze. And this is where data referencing comes into place. For this, we will click on the agent again and click inside the prompt. And here we have the um, possibility in this window to reference data from previous nodes. So let's update our prompt and include the actual data. I'll add analyze the customer feedback from, and here we see all our fields from the form trigger, and let's add the name here. Now you also see the preview down here where our placeholder is already inserted. So when I click this field over here, a placeholder will be inserted into our prompt, which you can see by the coloring and the curly braces. And down here is also the uh, preview of the prompt that the agent will actually receive with the name already filled in from our test data. Let's also add the feedback. Just click on here, and this will add the placeholder. And now we inserted the actual data to analyze. Let's try this one again. And by clicking on the play button right here on a node, you can test run just one single node. We will do that and see what the outcome will be. Okay, the agent is ready, and we can see it actually summarized the feedback, gave the category and the correct sentiment, which is great. Now the agent receives the actual customer feedback and name from our submission. Now we can also see how the data flows through the workflow, because each node can access the outputs from the previous nodes. Now, of course, we also want to do something with our analysis. And for that, we want to add an action node. We click on the plus again, which will add another node, and select actions. And here already see the multiple integrations that we already have, but we want to add select, so I'll search for that in here. And let's select send message. Actions are very important because they let you connect to external tools like email or Slack. Okay, let's configure this. First, you have to authenticate with Slack or uh, select your existing connection. Next, you can decide if this action should be performed automatically or if you have to confirm. For me, I just want to run it automatically. And then we have some input fields that we need to add for our message. This is the channel ID. And here we can also let this be filled out by AI. More for that uh, in other videos. But here I just want to set a manual channel ID because I want to send this to our internal customer feedback channel. And for the text, I want to prompt the AI to generate a text that will be that will be sent as the message. And I also prepared a prompt for this. Prompt says, write a message to post the new customer feedback from customer name in Slack with the sentiment category summary and the original feedback given and some formatting instructions. Now, you can see how we reference data from both the trigger and the agent, creating a rich and informative message. So. Uh, next, let's select Sonnet 4.5 for this. And with that, we are also done with our last action node. So let's done start a complete test run. We can do this over here at the test run button and replay our test event that we already had. Click run full flow. And now our workflow executes all the nodes with our test data. And you can watch as the workflow executes and see which node is currently running. The trigger receives the data, the agent analyzes it, and the action sends it to Slack. As you can see, we also uh, see the output of each node down here and here. And we also see that the structured output is exactly as we defined. And if we check Slack, we see that there's our message. The workflow worked perfectly. Now that we have tested it, let's deploy. For that, we can click on the Deploy button on the top right. And here you can already see the deployment history and version control, because Langdog keeps track of every change you make. So for our first version, we need to give, uh, give it a name, and I will call this our initial setup. When we click Deploy, we can also see that the workflow is automatically enabled, which we can see on the top here, which means it's now ready to receive some real events. And for our form trigger, this means Langdog generates a shareable URL, and we can copy this over here and paste it in a new tab and here we can see the form. We can share this URL with the teammates, and they can uh, submit the feedback in here, which will then trigger the workflow. And that's it. We have built, tested, and deployed our own workflow. And in the next video, we will make this workflow even more powerful. See you there.